Hi, welcome to Cutscene. If you're doing this right, you're about to hear three assholes with differing opinions about where this anime is going. I'm Eric. I'm Jason. And I'm Chris. And welcome to Cutscene by I Beat It First. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> we are halfway, well, more than halfway. We're two thirds of the way through Outbreak Company now, everybody. Outbreak Company. Watch Magic and Lollies. Talk about boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, that, that's a great intro. That is a great intro. You better than the making, fucking intro of the show. You've been making some great jingles. <laughs> I like, missed my calling. Some yes. great jingles these last couple of days, man. <laughs> All I gotta say, <laughs> missed my calling for sure, man. And yes, now you, you make me want to go back through the. Uh, Go back through the Slack channel real quick and pull up your pull up your Flint, Michigan one. Oh and yeah, they, that one was <laughs> prime. Because man, that was now I good. really want to pull that up. That's, I'm just gonna keep scrolling through our Slack channel. Which oh my god, we talk about way too much shit during the day when we, we should just don't shut up. Well, what sucks through. for me we with our Slack channel is I don't know too. which one we're talking in like 80 percent of the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll say something random in the non-random channel, and then I'll be like, oh, that was oh, random. Yeah. It wouldn't be anything. And I'll scroll. I bet this is the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, it, it, for sure. Like, unorganized as fuck. All right, we're going to break a little bit from Semi-organized. our Semi-organized? <laughs> Today, it was announced that apparently Jaden Smith has solved the Flint, Michigan water problem. <laughs> <laughs> So, Not solved, just donated a crap ton to it, right? Well, it was his. It was his foundation that helped create the clean water system for it. That's right. And then donated everything. So technically, yes. And Jason <laughs> decided to make his own Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme to go along with Jaden Smith <laughs> in <laughs> West Flint, Michigan, with the water and a craze. As a wee voice actor, is how I spent my days acting all shitty and making crappy anime. When a couple of guys started making no. Making doubt my life choices. And I got I got one bad movie and my dad got scared and said you should spend your time in helping those in Flint MA. <laughs> it, or M I, because you M. messed I. up and said MA. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's not the greatest, but damn, it was like boom, you got it right there. <laughs> as soon as I was like, quickly too. <laughs> yeah, I want, I was like, I knew I wanted to be like Fresh Prince because it's like he is like quote unquote the Fresh Prince now, right? But he's not fresh. He does crappy anime voice acting and a uh, shitty movie. <laughs> a couple so of like, shitty right. movies. Remember, he did that super racist movie, you know, the karate kid about the kung fu master. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that one too. The so black kid too. learning kung fu that they call karate. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> show me. <laughs> I know Kung Fu. Show mm. me, Can't be show racist. Show me where Jaden Smith hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the Michael Jackson uh, uh, documentary now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that's kind of rough. <laughs> Dude. Dude. Yeah, Dude. I need to watch it, and it. I, I'm not surprised. It is rough. All right. Like, if, if you like it at all... They like MJ at all? Don't don't watch it. Keep keep your blind <laughs> blinders <laughs> on, man. <laughs> he's he's dead. <laughs> it's fine. All keep right. So uh, just so that we're all clear, I'll read the plot and then we'll go. We'll do a quick recap of the last couple episodes and then boom, we'll jump right into it. So oh yeah, Outbreak anime. Company. Anime. Oh yeah. Anime. Shinichi, oh, yeah. Kano. <laughs> Shinichi Kano is a young secluded otaku who is offered a job thanks to his vast knowledge of anime, manga, and video games. However, just after meeting his employer, he is kidnapped, awakening in an alternate world with a fantasy setup. Shinichi is then informed that he was in fact selected by the Japanese government to help improve his country's relations with this new world by establishing a company to spread the unique products to the Jap or of the Japanese culture to this new unexplored market. Otaku culture. So, uh, he went there, met his maid named Musil, which we refer to as either Metamusil or Fibercon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. best girl. Best girl. Um, best girl. Ah, you, you basic. Uh, you basic, no, Chris. Not best girl. Uh, no. Then we find, <laughs> we meet Patralka, who is the empress. Who is drunk all the time. Yes, who is who is the drunk white girl, like the stereotypical <laughs> drunk white girl, screaming the entire time, which we dub as Patron or Jose Cuervo, depending on how we feel at the time. 
We also we also met uh, Minori, who is Big Boobs McGee, as we call her, and she is uh, part of the JSDF. Uh, Elvia Heineman, who is a werewolf, <laughs> but not re- not really. They call her a werewolf. She's really just a wolf girl, like a cat girl, but a wolf instead. I don't know. Um, I think I think horn dogs the the best way to go yeah, with it. Horn dog. Yeah, cause because we hadn't come up with a nickname for her. so Horny McHornerson. Just a uh, horn dog, <laughs> especially after this episode five. Oh, Jesus gosh, Christ, yeah. so horny. <laughs> Jin Zaboro Matoba, uh, who is the old man from Japan, which we just call him old man. Uh, call me old man. <laughs> And old man has got to take care of the drunk girl. <laughs> no, no, that different old man. That's the that's the other old man. Oh, OK. <laughs> and then uh, Garius and Cordball, like he's so not that old. That other old man is so not in there that he's not even brought up in the wiki. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would. Garius, like, what? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Garius, who is the cousin of Petralka, Patron um, and captain of her guard. Which we find out some shit about that. So, um, but yeah, so he established the company, built a school, uh, developed relations, um, radical racist, like super duper racist insurgents came in um, <laughs> and tried to blow everything up. Uh, it all went, it all went bad for them. Uh, and then they, they started school. We found out that everybody is racist. Like, everybody's racist. Dwarves are racist against elves. Elves are racist against dwarves. Everybody's racist against humans and vice versa. <laughs> so They're even more racist than what they give off because in the oh, class, yeah. it's, just, it's just elves and dwarves. But we know there's other races, and none of them are in this motherfucking class. <laughs> yeah. Like, because the they're lower people. than them. Yeah, the, the wolf, wolf people, people the lizard men. Yeah. 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 The lizard men aren't in it. Um, we know that lo- the lizard men are just considered like completely low um half elves are lower than both elves and humans because they're a mix of the two yeah nobody accepts <laughs> yeah. them yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nobody wants to be with them um they're which is bastards. what our yeah bastards which is what our bitches. maid is our maid is a half elf um i don't know jason who's best girl in this chinji <laughs> I'll so, give you that one <laughs> Shinichi Kano The main character Which we dubbed Shinji If you've watched Neon Genesis Evangelion <laughs> Or Neon, Neon Genesis Neon Genesis Evangelion <laughs> So Well when Patron says his name It yeah, almost second. always sounds like Shinji Because Shinji. Shinji. she's just slurring I'm her fucking that. shit I don't Where's my Shinji? Where's my rosé? Seven Shinji <laughs> now. Where's my wine? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So the, I would say that this is probably the worst part of this batch of four episodes. Is you don't get enough drunk Petralka. There's like long sections where you go without drunk Petralka, and it's a little sad. I like Petralka it only because great. it's only better if you imagine that she's drunk. Yes. She's not actually <laughs> drunk. And that's so why I was explaining this, this whole time. Was yeah, exactly. Trying to like, where is the drunk chick? <laughs> oh, the drunk chick shows up. <laughs> she does. But very few. Far between. The, the drunk chick almost goes streaking at a soccer game. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part. <laughs> you just liked the soccer game. <laughs> that well, yeah, wasn't really soccer, but yes. I like the drunk girl running on the field. <laughs> I'm going to play now. I'm going to play. Fuck you guys. I'm going to play myself. (laughs) High five, you weirdo. All right. So on that note, we get into episode five. This really is another world. It's it's a horrible, horrible title. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. (laughs) Erbia moves to Shinichi's manor, but she starts displaying some strange behavior and he starts believing that she is coming after his life, unaware of her real intentions. So... Horn dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no beating around the bush. She's no. in heat, bitches. <laughs> she's Which in, I called yep. it, like, the first thing that I was like, I'm like, oh my god, she's gonna be in heat. Well, oh, I mean, he walks man. in on her after, like, comp- like, complimenting her drawings and she's drawing him. It's just <laughs> like, okay, I know exactly what's going on now. But really fucked up. 
Oh like, yeah. Oh like, yeah. You, you could see from that drawing like why you would infer that she's thinking like I'm gonna murder him because he looked like he was anguished and whatnot. And then it turns out that she just got all like furiously sweaty and it smudged shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, these four episodes were a pain, man. I, I was really looking forward to a lot more like development on the sinister side of what the hopefully undertone of this entire uh, series is going to be. But it was just not there. V- yeah, it just wasn't really there though, as much as I was looking for. Like we had a crap ton of character development in the first four episodes, uh, like a lot. I was just like even surprised. I was like, hey, you know what? All these silliness and, and boob jokes are worth it just because there's actually some like deeper stuff going on here. Mm-hmm. These four episodes are just like, nope, it's a fucking harem. Deal with it. The Boobies. best is when they call it out. <laughs> yeah, they did. They totally, like in this first one, it's just like, yeah, it's a nice little harem you got here. You got the, yep. you got the uh, wolf tits. You got the lolly tits. You got the maid tits. Hey, you know, big boobs. McGee approves. BL. It's just like, good God. Like, this is this is not great. I, I think that you're uh, okay. I honestly think that you're really just looking past like how long some of these sections were, and not seeing everything. You know, I'll, in my I'll give personal it, opinion, I'll, which we'll 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 get to it when, as we go through, but I, I think that you might change your tune just like even just a little bit after we start going through everything. I hope so. That's that's at least what I think. You know, we'll see. All right, so Wolf Girl's drawing anime. Uh, he's praising her. Blah 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 blah. Um, and then she says she points out that they use or that she uses drawing to to distract her from her killing instinct. And that animal, basically, like, all the instinct. wolves come up with new or come up with some type of skill or task or something like that so that they get distracted from it, which is kind of interesting. Um, and, like, they then cut and uh, Big Boobs then just asks Shinji, hey, are you teaching a lecture on BL today? Well, I wasn't planning on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> just <laughs> it's all she cares about. BL, 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 BL. Oh, okay. I guess not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's then the on-running thing is the whole BL thing and whatnot. Um, <laughs> She's oh, a huge fucking otaku. You learn that in those, these four episodes. Oh, yeah. Even more oh, so. Huge. Well, and especially like when he starts talking about the dating sims. So he starts he starts teaching them about, about Japanese dating sims. Um then they're like, teacher, who's your favorite character? And then just immediately he's like, oh, he's, it's Iora Fujimaki. And and he starts like just waxing poetic about her in the game. And then he just starts demoing playing a game really badly, I might add. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly what you would expect an otaku to do of like not knowing how to actually talk to women and <laughs> everything. Well, it I think was- he was showing the different scenarios of how you could approach it. No, he was because he's played this game so many. He knows every single path. No, he was he was smiling at it. In my opinion, of like, yeah, I'm doing this right. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I kind of took it as just like uh, I'm trying to show off this game, and I just fucked it up. <laughs> like, hmm. it, it could be that like he came to the realization. He's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think he knows how to play the game every single way. Yeah, I mean, they did a great job covering what a neat times. does, like, in yeah. later episodes. So this dude's fucking played games, right? Yes. So, I don't Although, know. I as agree. we found out, he has definitely played a lot of JRPG. <laughs> a lot of grinding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, <laughs> she then asked him, Hey, are you going to teach about, are you going to teach a BL lesson tomorrow? <laughs> I, I hadn't <laughs> planned on it. Well, I wasn't okay, planning fine. on it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we get there, and Fiber is doing the wolf's laundry, um, and, like, all of her shit's, like, super dirty, which I was like, why is it super dirty? And then I was like, oh, well, if she is just drawing with, like, straight charcoal, and she's down on all fours drawing on the ground, I could probably see that. Um, but uh, tells uh, Fiber starts going on and on about how, like, how important the wolf girl is and how important everybody else is, but she's not. And then he has to reinforce her that, no, it's like everything that you're doing is actually some of the most important because I can't do any of that shit because I'm inept. (laughs) Pretty much. 
I'm gone all the time, and I'm inept. There's no way that I could possibly clean and or fend for myself. Yeah, and then he was just yeah, like, oh, it's shaman. so great having you be here and, and take care of all this bullshit, and let me help you real fast. And it's just like, ugh, God. Yeah. God. And then he's helping with the laundry. And then girl. He's hanging stuff up, <laughs> and then she goes to hand him, like, a pair, and she's like, oh, shit, this is my underwear. <laughs> Which I thought I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, uh, Wolf Girl doesn't come, so Horny McCornerson doesn't come down for dinner. Uh, he goes up there after dinner, and she's drawing like that really scary image that we were talking about, where she like smudged everything up, and she's got a really fucked up look in her eyes, and he just runs out. Um, and then this is when, so on this one, so they do the the cut to the the split of the episode, and it's uh, Ramilda. And uh, Ramilda Favaname, uh, and her favorite anime is is Handsome Academy, <laughs> and her favorite character is Yaucher Yuichi or Foucher Yoichi, um, and then the next one is Loic, and both of these are students. <laughs> and then favorite anime ISS, favorite character is Naya Koma, or Koyamata. Yeah, this was a, a really rough, this one, because they had a lot of references and a lot of stuff that obviously, that, being American and not growing up on this jazz, I was just, like, totally missing like, out on. who? Yeah, what? exactly. I mean, because I, I, I figure that they're not the direct characters just because you don't, for, you know, copyright or trademark or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But even even if it is, like, a pun or, hey, you, you, you'd know who this is just by the missing character. Obviously, I don't, I'm not, I guess that nerdy or you know not not into that far in the japanese culture or stuff like that so especially when he was describing like a lot of the games and the transition for to the creation of uh the dating sim and stuff like that and it would bring up like hey this is in reference to this game and this is in reference to this other game and stuff like that i was just like yeah wow i haven't i've never heard of this stuff before because most likely it's never even been imported into uh, uh america let alone even uh something i would have played yeah so it's yeah, some of them are a little a little rough and a little hard to figure out for it, so it's definitely a, a problem. So Which is okay. I mean it, it, it's yeah. it's that's not that important. It's just it's been like a little bit of an interesting thing to be like, hey, you know what? I could always be nerdier. And here's mm-hmm. the other thing I guess, is that it's I, I can't tell if it's trying to make itself as a test for the Japanese people that watch this of like, hey, do you know these things? Because if so, then you're probably an otaku, or you're more otaku than you think you are, <laughs> or, fucking Or we nerd. have a job application for you to take. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Please take our job test. Please. Please take our job test. <laughs> this is the last Starfighter. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that, of, like, like the whole last Starfighter thing, of, like, this is... <laughs> so many parallels to 80s stuff. <laughs> So Big Boobs is still pushing the the BL thing, like, really hard. So hard. <laughs> Which, if you so don't hard. remember the last one, BL is <laughs> boys love. <laughs> they walk inside, and the students are arguing over the best games, and they're all still super racist. <laughs> like, super duper racist, just laying in on each other. And then at one point, the... The elves refer to the to the dwarves as lolly loving something or others, and they've uh, they've actually officially formed the Lolly Dwarves Protection Society. Yep, yep. <laughs> all the, the guy dwarves are like no, no 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 you guys are wrong. Yeah, all dwarven women are eternal lollies, so they deserve the protection of all dwarf men for all eternity. <laughs> and then the <laughs> other one says the worst line of the series so far. <laughs> Go for it. Little boobies are the best. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I was just like, Jesus. Like, so I was I just guess like, okay. dwarves are on two ends of the spectrum because the 10 year old um, dwarf children, men, yeah. look like but, they're old men, like the full beards. But apparently, women are internal lollies. Yeah, this, so, this doesn't well, help. Well, yeah, and you see one of the dwarven women. That's the, the chick that in the soccer match is like raging hell. Oh, yeah. Um, but. This, this does bring a valid point. Can, is it all right? I mean, they're ten. No, it's not all right. <laughs> no, for them to no for them to say that like, is it okay? 
I don't know. Yeah, if they're 10 years old, what's a lolly to a 10-year-old? Exactly. Well, they, <laughs> but the, a lolly to them is like just the little girl version that they see all the time, which is like what that one, the 10-year-old girl that is there. It, it's all <laughs> weird. You know what? You do bring up a good point, though, because it would just be then a, a group of 10-year-old boys being like, hey, we're going to stand up for all of our equal-aged uh <laughs> Female compatriots. Right? right? Nothing weird about that. <laughs> Nothing weird about that. Just his writing is making it as creepy as fucking possible. <laughs> no, it's... Instead of just be like, hey, we're in an anti-bullying society. No. They decide to be like, lollies are the best. <laughs> no, it's it's not And the they have writing. full beards. It's their full beards that are making it cringy. <laughs> no. It's, it's how the they say it, that plus the full beards. look like... Because yeah, the again, if they're just like, hey, look we're like full grown men. <laughs> no, if they're just like, hey, we're just here to like protect people. And, uh, you know, we think that girls should be protected. And you're a bunch of 10 year old boys. Hey, all right. That's endearing. That's cute. You know, even in uh, American society or, or current society, that would be like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> but the second that they're just like, even if 10 year old, like, let's say your son and two of his best buddies were just like, hey, we're going to commit. We're going to make a group where we're just going to protect all of the girls at the school. You'd be like, all right, that's cool, son. And then his best friend would be like, yeah, little titties are the best. <laughs> You'd be like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to smack you right now. <laughs> If they called themselves the Lolly Protection the Society, I'd just look at them and say, you fucking weebs, get out of my house. <laughs> the worst, man. The worst. <laughs> so, <laughs> Big Boobs fires a gun to get attention. Everybody sits down. They're all a little scared. Um, <laughs> then they start going through class. And then uh, Patron summons... Shinichi and uh, Big Boobs McGee and Fibercon to the Royal Palace. Uh, as they're leaving, the wolf is just glaring out a window at them. Uh, and Shinichi uh, thinks that she's an assassin. She's going to kill him. <laughs> and then, so then they get there. And now we get, we get our first glimpse of drunk Patrolka, <laughs> drunk <laughs> drunk white girl Patron. What are you doing here? I hate you and all my, li- my little bleeding heart. Or, oh, no, sorry. God. My little blackened heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right. God, she just starts like going back and forth, and it turns out she's just trying to be a Sundare. <laughs> so painful. And very poorly. Very poorly I as mean, well. Tundra. <laughs> tundra so, means. Yeah. Sun- so sundare? they just they go through that argument, and everything ends up being fine. It's like, yeah, you don't have to act like that. Stop being weird. And then we find out that uh, that Gallius borrowed a BL book from Big Boobs McGee. <laughs> and really enjoyed it. And super enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> so we know who's not the bottom. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. But this also pissed me off, too. Um, not just that, but like... More of like the she's just drunk off her ass all the time because it's not like they're like right next door to the the castle. It's yeah, they have like to go into the an town. hour, two hours by carriage. You know who knows how long it takes to get in into town, and all she does is go, "What are you doing here?" and and pull this bullshit. Uh, I, oh God. I'm a tundra. Yeah, she was trying like, to. Yeah, I'm, I'm a tundra. A tundra. <laughs> Do you mean a sundare? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did not write down that she pronounced it way wrong. Completely <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> wrong. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> but the the whole thing of like of her doing that is it's harkening back to episode four. When it's like she can't go to the school like she wants to anymore. That's true. And she and wants so to she go just and visit. And out. She's not allowed to because of all the bullshit that happened the last right. time that she was there. Good point. Good point. So I, I think that like yeah, having having the two week gap between that and forgetting what happened and why it's like you you kind of like misplaced that whole setup. But they're just building off of that whole thing. She wants to be there. She wants to go and do whatever she wants to. And now she can't because there's assholes, just like modern day society. Mm-hmm. You can't do fun things because assholes ruin everything. They ruin everything. Yep. Oh, God. So she let's has see here. Responsibilities. Um, so, oh, so this is where we find that the whole reason that she loans the book out and that this whole meeting is because now 
BL is a requirement in the curriculum for the school because Gallius liked it. Patron thought that it was interesting <laughs> and they make it a requirement within there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, there was a there was a touching moment where he was he just kept asking questions and Fiber just kept saying yes to everything for some reason. I don't know why she just got all flustered, I guess. Um, and then he has a dream of fiber that then turns into a nightmare. And that's when you find out that the wolf is in heat. And that's when she like literally jumps on him <laughs> while he's in bed. <laughs> <sighs> and they come in and they find that out. Um, let's say, oh yeah. And then this is when, uh, Minori makes her hair, her harem comment. And then they cut to the end with more students arguing. <laughs> Just. God, like it, it was, it was like so evident, and then they just put kind of like just touch, just, just put the nail on the head, you know, just like here you go. It's so obvious, and it got there was like, like I said, it's just like, uh, this whole episode was like literally two minutes worth of stuff, the rest of it was just trying to set up this harem. <laughs> Bug me. <laughs> How do you really feel about it, Jason? It bugged me. I, I just mm -hmm. like, like I said, I was really excited uh, last week going into about to watch these these next four. I'm just like, sweet. I'm really looking forward to like having that waxing moment of it being like not not like super just otaku and moving into like, hey, this is a real story that's going on. The more that after these four, it totally just feels like, all right, all story is going to be in the last two episodes and it's just going to be like shit hits the fan and then you have to deal with it and then that's it. So we'll probably have Kinda. like two more episodes of bullshit, which I can tell one of them is going to be that <laughs> just by looking at the preview uh, image episode. that they have. You mean episode yeah, nine where it's the beach episode? The beach episode. So, you know, it's going to be just pure fanfic as they, well. They couldn't get out. Get away with not having B tips. Of course, they have to have episode. it. That's like a staple, but still, it's just like, uh, I just because they did a pretty like fan servicey uh, uh, um, episode with, I believe, the next one that was over the top. No, 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 the after the soccer that was over the top as well. But we'll get even to that. even the next one, the the made in Japan one, isn't that like isn't that over the top. It could have been way more. His dream was pretty. Oh, much his dream just... was definitely over the top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're talking we're talking a very small segment of of the episode as opposed to an entire episode. This is true. It's not hentai. <laughs> Good point, Eric. <laughs> well, it, it's not that it's hentai. It's that the swimsuit episode is literally like the most over the top thing that you can do, <laughs> without Usually. it being hentai. <laughs> Usually. This one's doing right. a pretty good job. So that brings us to episode six, soccer. Soccer? To deal with the divide between the elf and dwarf students, Shinichi organizes a friendly soccer match between both sides, and it does not take long for it to become a vicious battle between them. So this is the one where I'm saying, I'm like, I don't know if you were really reading as much into it. We do get to see the drunk empress run out onto the field and... Uh, and make a, a drunken ass out of herself. But it, it has a lot of, uh, it, it shows a lot of what Japan was actually thinking about as far as like what they, what their main motivation is for this. And it also shows the society, the Empress has a, a friendly relationship with a half elf. So right. there, there was a lot of, mm -hmm. there was a lot to build on that. Sure, there was some weird stuff, but it definitely, none of this was, well, Except for the very beginning of it. <laughs> no, this, this episode None was pretty... Was, was super pretty over the top. No, no, this this episode was actually pretty funny where, uh, you know, all the soccer stuff, really like the whole Shaolin soccer vibe that they gave off to it a lot. Like, I loved the crap out of a lot of that stuff. That was that was fun. I, I just meant that like, well, first of all, it's just a waste of time. Anytime soccer is involved in life, period. Soccer and is a waste false. of time. <laughs> soccer is the worst thing ever. No, I'm sorry. Best water polo ever. is. I'd rather watch water polo any day. No, water polo is just soccer, but in water, meaning yeah. you move slower. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather watch it. And there's no chance that they're going to drown. If there were chances that they were going to drown, like if you put water polo, but in, but like put in a shark, I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Every five minutes, there's not as 
goal scores from Chum gets thrown in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. Move faster, exactly. fuckers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, no, no. Um, the every time a every time a goal is scored, you got to figure out where the chum's got to get thrown, because if they just throw it in in general, then no one's going to want to score. Well, no. Every time a goal is not scored. Oh, like, so like, like for every 10 minutes that limit. there's no goal? <laughs> kind of like uh, kind of like in Battle Royale, it's like for every, you know, eight hours that nobody dies, we're going to start blowing people up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay. I can get behind, I can get behind that. that Sounds like a next, next anime right there. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme Water Polo. <laughs> water Polo Academy. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so this is where I say that, sure, it's not that over the top. Okay, they pick right up with an argument about what's better, moe or boys love. (laughs) And then more racism. Lots and lots more racism. None of it is as bad as, oh, God, where is the part where the racism first comes up? Oh, with the the pretty tree, like, people or whatever? What was it? It was so great. They got some solid burns in. Dude, but that one racist remark was just on point. It was like, oh my god, I can't believe like that they actually wrote that. And then the fact that there's ten year olds saying it too. <laughs> well, it's easy when it's fictional beings. <laughs> I'm I'm still saying, man, what the fuck? Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, elves are pansy tree monkeys. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I found it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so then she fires off her gun to get everybody th- to do it, and he notices that the guns aren't scaring them anymore. So this isn't that's good. A thing. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. We don't have anything to worry about. This is fine. gunfire in school. Pops. Gunfire in school is no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Shinichi decides that he wants to get rid of the racism between the elves and the dwarves uh, and uh, decides that he wants to figure out what to do. Uh, Patron's not happy with fi- that Fiber will be helping him teach because um, he wants to keep, he wants to have like a more diverse teaching setup. So he figures that a half elf helping to teach will help them not be racist. Maybe if it was like a half dwarf, half elf. They never really have covered that that exists. Can it's not possible. No, they're way too racist towards each other (laughs) for that to exist. Do pig and elephant DNA match? (laughs) Chris knows what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Just five seconds of awkward silence. (laughs) (laughs) That will all be cut out, thank God. (laughs) Um, So... They're going through and they're unpacking everything. He finds this giant golden soccer ball. And as soon as he says ball, uh, Horny McHornison perks up like, like hilariously. Uh-huh. As if you said, yeah, as if you said walk. Yeah. <laughs> or puppy we'll tree. Walk. What? Huh? Yep. Huh? Huh? Bacon. Bacon? Where? Bacon. <laughs> so Get she goes nuts. <laughs> and we find out that. Minori pre-ordered a soccer anime just to get the special golden ball. Sorry, Big Boobs McGee. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Just to get the special golden ball. Wolf steals it. Big Boobs chase. Big Boobs gets a machine gun out and chases after her. Uh, soldiers tackle her. <laughs> and another soldier yells, give that ball back or we're going to let that crazy lady take you out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting to me because that means they're all afraid of her. Yes. So she's not only otaku, she's also insane and has a <laughs> history of being insane. Yes. Well, and she's insane and I, I liken her probably to uh, to the main character from Gate who is like the otaku weird guy who is also a... Oh, Green Lieutenant Beret. Major or whatever. Badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like the most badass person in that entire platoon. <laughs> like completely by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> but the best part is that like it's all by it, in that anime, it's all by mistake, technically, but he still passes everything. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. like they just give him honorific titles of it. He still goes through and passes everything. Yep. And yeah. 
He's just an insane badass. <laughs> <laughs> he can murder you 3,000 times, but he just cares about lollies. <laughs> you're, well, you're lucky. Uh, lollies and elves. He, he does like the elves. Huh? Um, and yeah, the, the 972-year-old uh, lolly... Uh, God, what what was she? Rory. Goddess of death. Demigod. Yeah, demigod. <laughs> like, God, that was, that whole scene was hilarious when they were in like the Senate, oh. and she starts talking to that one to that like forty year old woman. She's like, I don't know about you, but we honor our our elders. And she's like, Ha! Huh, what are you talking about? He's like, Actually, she's the oldest person here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Actually, you don't look bitch. like a twelve-year-old. <laughs> hey, buddy, you know you looking for your mom? No, I'm looking for my no. wife. Your wife? Yeah, I'm married. What? How old are you? Thirty-five. What? what? <laughs> yeah, I'm older than you, douchebag. <laughs> Can I see some ID for that beer? Sure thing. Probably ten years older than you too. Actually, you're twelve <laughs> years older. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they give her the ball back. Uh, he decides to make the kids play soccer. Uh, as we talked about, um, and Patron will watch will watch the match, and they're going to get Japan to sponsor the game because you know you need sponsors. They need money for some reason. Yeah, it, that's the why funny not? thing is like, why do you need money? Yeah, build the field. Like you, give them well, sweet yeah, but like that's anime kind of jerseys. What they're there for? They built an entire fucking school for Pete's sake. Right. They like talking about the fact of sponsorship is kind of a. It, it doesn't need to be said, I guess, would be the big thing. Um, and then where, yeah, they they, actually, yeah, where did they put the field, too? I was just kind of like, if, if Japan was sponsoring this, wouldn't they have put it, like, close to the school? It might have been close to the school. No, it was, like, right next to the castle. No, it was, like, in between the two. It wasn't right next to the castle. That castle's gigantic. You could well, just see it. Okay, like, <laughs> outside the, the walls of yeah. it. No, it was close to it. It was outside, it was outside the city. And they sponsored prizes for the winning team. Oh yeah, that's right. And they they gave them the prizes for the winning team. That's right. Yeah, it was to whoever won got the game, the PSP. Yeah, they all got yep. a yeah yeah. They were all supposed to get a game console and video games of their choice. Um, the old man is intrigued with the soccer match, which is the the Japanese old man. Um, it makes you think that there's ulterior motives. Like he was like a little bit too intrigued as they were going about. It. So they were they were really trying to push a little hard on, hey. Government sucks. <laughs> you should probably not trust the government. <laughs> um, and that's when you find out the winners get a game console of their choice. Uh, oh, sorry. You find out that Fiber's uh, English is getting a lot better, too. Japanese. Um, or Japanese. Sorry. Yes, mm. I wrote English. I literally wrote Fiber's English is getting better in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> They're not even teaching her English and she figured it out. <laughs> She's so smart. <laughs> uh, he shows them a soccer anime for reference. I'm like, that's not going to work. Because <laughs> soccer, like any sports anime is always like just super athleticized and weird shit and they've got stupid names for things and boy Actually, was I worked very well. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was proven wrong. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fancy world. Yes, I, I, I wasn't thinking about that when I wrote that. I'm like, I literally, I'm like, show some soccer anime for reference. That's not going to work. And then later I'm like, oops, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> it totally works. <laughs> So uh, the JF the JSDF is oh sorry uh, as they get there um, let's see here the he teaches them all a lot like like a, really a lot like they surprisingly learn a lot of soccer in one week I don't think that anybody could actually learn that much soccer in a week but uh, they, they kick do. ball and net you're good <laughs> as soon as you yeah, see the net learning shoot. how to kick that ball well is actually takes a long time. <laughs> You're good. Chris, Chris it, can, can you attest to that, soccer yeah. boy? But <laughs> in a fantasy I setting, I can bend abilities. it like Beckham. <laughs> you can bend it like Beckham? <laughs> in a fantasy setting, I can bend it like Beckham. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's right. They're magic. It's okay. Uh, so then they, they uh, as they get their big boobs McGee is just 
taking pics of the elf team with their shirts off. <laughs> oh, <that'd be> elf. <laughs> but not even that, like it's not like she was having them do anything. She was just taking pictures of the elves with their shirts off. But it's only the elf team. None of the She's dwarves. She's very horny. <laughs> She's <is> super horny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they show that the JSDF is recording the entire video. Uh, and then they switch, and this is more uh, students at the section. Uh, L, whose favorite anime is Super Love 2000%. And uh, the favorite character is Tokyo Ichinose. And then Dwala. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. These were the... Were these the... These are like the dwarfs that are... The BA dwarves. Was it the for... dwarves or was it the? Oh no, the the knives and S, uh, knights and SDF members are the next episode. I was trying yeah. to remember if like if it was like the the soldiers. Um, yeah, the Dwala, whose favorite anime is Roku Club, and favorite character is Hanako Hakamata. Um, so they start off. Uh, they do the opening pitch, right, Chris? Is that what it's called? The opening what? Did you Pitch, say? like when when well like uh, in in hockey they have a great term it's called the face off where they put the ball or they put the puck out and they go after it so at the very beginning of the game when the ball is at the center of the field it's called kickoff. Okay, it's just called kickoff. Yeah, the field is called the pitch. Okay, the field is called the pitch. Okay, so yeah. the opening kickoff. She just aims at the goal and just like launches a nasty kick into the goal and scores. She was going to see the net. From half shoot the it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See the net, aim at the net, shoot. <laughs> what more training do you need? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but the, the thing that I find funny is that they still allowed for the four targets to be behind the net. Well, like I think just that's just where they were training, and then they just, just put, put the put nets up there. in front of the targets. Yeah, I know, but it's like, I, w- I would have been like, hey, can we move these targets so that she doesn't have, like, actually something to aim at? It's <laughs> their first fucking soccer match. You think they're going to be all like, we know what we're doing. <laughs> they, the dwarves apparently have super strength. Well, they're dwarves. And, yeah. And as we find out at halftime, they allow the elves to use fucking magic. <laughs> so, maybe... Nobody needs a candy cap. Maybe <laughs> we could go with that. <laughs> this is where it gets interesting too. Finally, because they really made an effort to, to like really prove, hey, they are recording this, and mm-hmm. that's where I was like, okay, good. Like, obviously, there's the connotation that there's something more nefarious something. going on here, and I immediately went to, all right, so what they're doing is they're recording them to see what kind of magic abilities that they have and what their prowess is and athleticism. For invasion? Is it invasion? Is it to take over? Uh, what is the... What, I don't know because how much trying? actual information can you get that goes over the overarching like strengths of a society from 10-year-olds? Well, think of it this way. If the 10-year-old can shoot out nuclear blasts, what can a, a whole... Well, like, that's what I mean. Is like, are you just are you just trying to show of like this is what we should be afraid of because these are kids and they just get stronger from here, or are you talking about like trying to develop actual military strategy for invasion? In which case, the kids aren't going to help you that much because they're only the tip of the iceberg. Right, but like, okay, so we know that they can cast this kind of magic. What what is it? Ice? What is it? Like wind? What what are they using? that we can build something that's going to be defensive against it while the kids are just be the tip of the iceberg. We can at least see what they're, what at least is commonplace for mm-hmm. us to be able to defend against. They can literally cast a magic spell for everything except for heart. They cannot make Captain Planet, but they can come really damn close. So guess what America <laughs> fucking has? <laughs> heart so we're captain all planet captain planet <laughs> that's right they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get the usa Japan. in on this and as a world we're gonna come together and we're gonna show up in this alternative reality and everyone's gonna be like whatever and we can we can beat your guns and missiles and stuff like that because we got magic and they'll be like well guess what motherfucker we got the fifth thing heart <laughs> <laughs> but here's the weird thing is is that they could have gone the whole gate style anyways then at that right but i think that's why i think that this is like so number one finding out how you can fight uh the the military that is there then number two like they like we talked about at the beginning of this episode how to use it how to use it against them and 
take yeah. down the uh, infrastructure beyond. So showing that Patron it's not only that is how to take him down. It's also how to exploit him. Exploit, how sure, whatever. I mean, like, if you can, if you can make, make these people work for me. That too. So that's my other thought. It was just like, are they looking for a military like take it over, or are they looking for a military like, um. Uh, to make them, yeah, work for them or to uh, manipulate them type mm-hmm. thing. Like, hey, if we can have, uh, um, you know, 10, 10-year-old elf people locked up in a chamber and just blowing wind blasts at, like, a, a turbine, we have free energy for life over in, in Japan, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, what are they really, How? why are they recording this stuff? Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> we went from... We went from just trying to launch an attack and kind of take over to forced slavery <laughs> yeah. to build free energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went from military coup <laughs> to These kidnapping 10-year-olds. <laughs> we need to use Wait, Weren't you the one that was telling me that there was absolutely no <laughs> development whatsoever, that nothing made you think, and now you're like you're jumping straight on of like, yeah, they're just gonna enslave the society and make them do make them make power for Japan. And no, this is this, this is exactly what pissed me off because this is what I wanted to learn more about. I'm like, ooh, what's going on? Here's like five seconds of this episode that we're talking about more than anything else, and the rest of it's just them eating fucking rice off each other's faces, and I'm just like. Who gives a shit? <laughs> the problem is, I don't think it's really going to get there. I don't think so either. That's why I'm pissed at these four <laughs> episodes, because I was really waiting for that, like, half over. And it's definitely not going to happen until, like, the last two episodes now. Yeah, I think it's just hint at, like, yeah, we could go there, but uh, we're not. We're not going to. We're just going to be gonna, here. We're just going to, yeah, we're going to create this normal harem. We're going to make the jokes, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying the show. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm face palming all over the place and it's, I'm having fun with it. But at the same time, I was really excited to have like a, hey, let us lure you into this anime with like the uh, uh, cutesy fan service bullshit. And then all of a sudden you're in like the most hardcore racial like war, like drama you've ever seen in your life in 12 episodes. I thought that would have been amazing. <laughs> I am sending a small snippet snippet of a synopsis into the cutscene thread on our Slack channel. No. Read that. I don't want to. Read it. Am I reading it out loud? No. Oh. Don't read it out loud. I just I just want you to go, oh shit, okay. <laughs> See, I don't want you to send stuff like this to me because I want to have a, a, a better I want to be surprised, basically. Okay, I, that's it's the whole being thing deleted like. now. <laughs> what? <laughs> But yes, this show is definitely going to go places. It's <laughs> like, going to go those, that's what I'm saying. Though. It's going to go those places in the last two episodes. We're going to have two episodes of actual storyline. Like That's so typical anime style. Where Well, in this case, they really wanted to make something that was A, funny, B, told a, told a good, compelling, like, fun story, and then C, also had like really deep shit but you don't want to do like an entire 12 episodes of deep shit because then you end up with something like made in abyss where you're like can i actually be laughing at this part because there's a lot of fucked up shit going on right now like i don't think that i really should be laughing at this tiny little part where they're trying to instant where they're trying to inject humor into this really deep like somber story disagree made in abyss was a fucking amazing anime and everyone should 100 percent watch it well you should but this- i'm saying that injecting humor in like trying to inject humor into like, a very serious story just kind of always feels a little forced no i don't want to inject humor i wanted to be like you got to find humor in everything i mean shit just like some of the like, like saving private ryan there's humor in saving private ryan it's a very 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 drama movie and mm-hmm. stuff like that and i don't want a drama show with just some humor in it i was looking forward to an idea of it being like this is a comedy and then you get through the halfway point and all of a sudden you're just like man this was just deep as hell at the end of it and you're really surprised instead of it being 50 50 it's turning out to be 80 20 nothing wrong with it it's just not what i was expecting and hoping for i think that the saving grace is that that 20 is pretty dark we'll find out i I hope it is (laughs) well in general like even what they're showing right now like the the blatant like horrible racism in the society that's going on and the stuff that they're hinting at seems 
a lot darker than the lighthearted comedy of what this is supposed to be of an otaku getting his dream job and meeting a bunch of elves and wolf girls. True. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, if you just look at it at face value, anything dark is pretty damn dark in comparison to what the other part of the anime is. <laughs> True, 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 true. What no, I'll that? give you that because it's just that they're able to, I don't know, I guess the ju- juxtaposition is a little bit less than what I, I really, really, really wanted. And I guess maybe that's better just because it's not in your face and of just like, ooh, maybe I'm wondering. It allows us to think of what's going to happen rather than it just being like, yeah, we're going to fucking murder everyone in this goddamn town, you know, and it's coming. You don't know. So I guess I'm we'll trying to out. think of. Of what anime made like a huge complete 180 because I know that it's been there of where it's like one of those things of where it's like everything's happy go lucky and then all of a sudden blood's everywhere and the entire thing is taking a main turn towards just fucking chaos the, the the one that was basically heroes and the guy was actually like a, a oh, power sponge Charlotte Char- Charlotte which I've started rewatching Charlotte yeah. is awesome it yeah. was it was like heroes now but with incomplete powers and then yeah three or four episodes in everything just takes a major turn and it was it was quasi lighthearted like it was super lighthearted at the beginning and then a little lighthearted and then a little lighthearted and then kind of and then all of a sudden just dark and deep and yep. oh shit my brother, <laughs> I, I've now taken his power because he's blind and mm-hmm. can't use his power anymore because every time the, he uses his time travel ability, he goes blind more and more and more. <laughs> and, oh, I have to take everyone's powers and save the universe or save right. the world. Yep. <laughs> and I, I think like, that's right, more of what I was looking okay. for. It's all right. Oh, get to episode six. Holy fuck. fuck. Uh, yeah, you need to watch the show. <laughs> the show takes yeah. a fucking turn. Yeah, I, I think that's what I was more looking for. So I was super excited for these four, uh, and to have yeah. that not happen, I, that's it's why not, I was disappointed. Yeah, it's definitely not Charlotte-like. No. That is true. But I will say that that, that ju- the Charlotte stuff really actually kind of made me like that band that the girl liked. <laughs> so uh, I, I thought that was good. Okay, anyways, tangent. Uh, <laughs> 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 what anime are we talking about again? <laughs> Oh, uh, we're talking about Asami Asabase. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so he tastes the pee. <laughs> and for some reason, the girl's only got half a face of makeup. <laughs> All right, stop. We're, we're not... Outbreak Company. <laughs> That's what we're watching. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, we find out that the dwarves are surprisingly fast and agile um, and really strong which is not something that you normally see. And I mean, like, they're doing, like, fucking, like, field-destroying, Kamehameha destruction kicks into this goal. So much so that you see, like, bulldozers coming through and crossing, <laughs> crisscrossing paths to re-level out the field. Um, and they get to halftime, and it's 50 to 0, which is the best soccer game to watch, I guess, because... It's way better than a zero-zero tie. Best or worst? Because it's just completely one-sided. Yeah, just it's blow just like, yeah but at least someone's scoring. <laughs> yeah, people score all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to watch years of by soccer. all the time. You mean randomly <laughs> in very small amounts. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. <laughs> the amount of games in soccer ending in a zero-zero tie prove that to be true. Or not true. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need to watch enough. I don't. <laughs> I don't. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so they decide that they're like, that, or they say like, well, we can't just let them use magic. And the dwarves are like, why not? Let them use magic. I don't care. We'll take a handicap. And then the government is a little bit too eager to let them use magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We want an actual match. Because we're fucking yeah. these guys up. Yeah, we, we don't need a handicap. Um, so... Let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, and then this is... So, it wasn't another episode, Jason. It was the same episode. So, they're eating their, their rice balls. <laughs> no, I know that's when this was happening. <laughs> and they uh, he goes to he goes to help Petrolka because she's got a piece of rice Patron. on her face. Sorry, oh, Patron. This, yes, this Patron. So weird. <laughs> um, man, and it... 
this is way too much about eating rice off of a girl's face. Like, yes, this is so much. painful. But it's not even that it's painful. You're just like, what? No, it was rice <laughs> on his face too. <laughs> but you're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then yes, then she eats the piece of rice off of his face, and then uh, he's like, and oh then Fibercon, yeah. Fibercon eats a piece of rice off of his face. And no, yeah. What, no, it wasn't Fibercon. Who was no. it? No, it was his boyfriend. Oh no, it was Gallius. <laughs> <laughs> like right. he was like in heaven, was like, part. oh yeah, cute little girl, rice on my face. Oh shit! Then her brother did. Fuck, this is weird. Her cousin. Cousin, cousin. yeah. But the best part yeah, was uh, did. Boobs McGee and on the then, field going, what? Yeah. <laughs> Boobs McGee just like, <laughs> <laughs> So they, they let them use magic, and using magic make, actually makes it entertaining. <laughs> and then, this is where I was wrong, they really start doing crazy soccer anime bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like twin dragon ball score strike or whatever. I don't fucking know. They were just doing a bunch of weird ass shit. Shell and uh, soccer, I, the most yep. entertaining soccer ever. But it wasn't even shell and soccer. It was like full on anime. Like, like we're going to kick the ball. Oh, there's two dragons behind our legs. And boom, the ball is suddenly engulfed in flames and flying towards the goal. Shell and soccer, like, man. It's a great <laughs> show. <laughs> so after the first goal, two elves do the normal soccer thing of where they take their shirts off and touch each other because they, because fucking soccer. Uh, That's not a normal soccer and thing. Big Boobs McGee <laughs> is, Big Boobs McGee is taking pictures of them. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Uh, all the shit, uh, yeah, wow, man, I, I really stopped taking notes for a little bit. <laughs> so all the shit starts going crazy. Fucking crazy ass fight. Like, breaks out. Everything's just going haywire and all sorts of shit. It's Armageddon then, on that field. Yeah, it's Armageddon. Um, and then this is when you find out that that's what the government wanted, basically. Like, he's telling me, he's like, sports isn't all about camaraderie and building morale. Sports is also about war and about fighting and, and a battle to the death. And it can be many other things other than that. And he basically wanted shit to go crazy. Yeah, it basically creates more nationalism. Yeah, create more nationalism. It, it sports can create more nationalism, and it they really wanted it to to make the schism bigger between the two of and trying to divide the races more. Um, at which point, then Patron jumps in because what's a drunk white girl to do but to jump on the field and want to play soccer herself? I can do it just like you can. I can do it. Better. That's right. I'm I bored. Let's make now. this about me. Yeah. That looked like fun. <laughs> I want to be cool like you guys. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so she runs out on the field. Hey, Madam, you so do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Do a magic Does thing on me. Con use wind magic on her. And the best is, like, she uses wind magic on her. And you would think that, like, the wind magic would be propelling her somewhere or doing something. No, it creates a pillar that she stands on top of. And she's like, yeah, watch this. And then she kicks the ball, and it's the worst, most pathetic <laughs> kick possible. And basically just dribbles off of the end of the of that giant cyclone and then makes it into the goal. It's like watching, like, a, like a toddler try to play, like, soccer. Yes. And, like, it goes and scores, like, yeah! It's amazing! Yeah. Or, you You're know, like a drunk white girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that, Jason? Oh, my God, you? I scored a goal! <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life! <laughs> Did you see that? Give me a fucking hug! <laughs> <laughs> the worst. So, <laughs> Patron and Fibercon are hugging down on this out in the field and going crazy. And this is when they bring up the other thing of, of what do you think this is going to say to the rest of the country when they see that the Empress is embracing the the half elf, which is considered a much much lower class citizen, half and elf it makes you feel like. What they were, what they were hoping was going to happen, didn't end up being because while some of the people were really like, kind of like, what, what's going on there? They looked like they were kind of coming around real quick of like, oh, this is okay. 
Right. So, Which so was it looked like the government's try, like what they were hoping was going to happen, kind of backfired on them a little bit. Primarily because of the Empress doing it. If the Empress hadn't, then I I feel that everything would have gone much worse. The drunk white girl being the drunk white girl mm-hmm. actually made things better. Booze makes everything better. Yes. <laughs> She was drunk on face rice. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm drunk on love, bitches. <laughs> okay. This brings us to episode seven. Made in Japan. M-A-I-D. Made in Japan. Yeah, you get get that pun? Get no. It? Mm-hmm. Get it? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Clever play on words. Eh? <laughs> The best is that the translation is Meido in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Shinichi returns briefly to Tokyo to, to make some shopping just to, just to later find that Metamucil had sneaked, in, had sneaked her way to accompany him and he spends the rest of the day showing her the city. And this is the lighthearted, qu- or, well, pretty lighthearted, Um, some hilarious things that end up coming from it, but it wasn't, as Jason said, this one definitely didn't have that much going on for it. Um, They start complaining about ordering systems. uh, Oh, man, but this is the best part. This intro section was probably the best part of the entire episode. Did you catch the, the fourth wall, fifth wall, whatever the fuck you want to call it, breaking that they did? Which part? Okay, so they're talking about all the different animes and whatnot, and then uh, he brings up one anime specifically. And I was like, when I was first watching it, I'm like, I'm like, why is it that this one hasn't been changed? Like, everything else is very much a blatant ripoff. Like, you could tell that it was, like, that it was a pun, or they were fucking with the title just so it wasn't. And they said a title that I was like, that sounds like it's a real anime title. And he's like, he's like, and we got this one. He's like, I didn't even order this. I don't even know why it came. And they finish their conversation. And as he's walking out, he's like, wait, is that one really that bad? And <laughs> he's, they do a long inside joke because Nancho Welcome Home, uh, they were making fun of the director of that, who is the director of Outbreak Company. Okay, I and thought they literally I was said that, that he's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was just like, okay, that that seems that was probably a dig on something. <laughs> well, and they they say it too, like they, on the on the translation, like up in the thing, they're like, like he's the he's the director of Outbreak Company. <laughs> like they they do the whole little uh, Excel saga, like like pop spoiler video, yeah. thingy, pop-up video thing. And I just stopped it and I'm like, <laughs> that's good. The fact that they actually like did that and they're like, they're like, man, it's not so much that the anime is bad, but the director, he's just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and then they cut to, then they cut to the intro, the horrible, horrible intro. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, he, he's talking with, uh, with uh, Fibercon about having to go back to America and he wants to take her with, or uh, she wants him to take her with him. Uh, and they tell him that people can't go to their world because they aren't like used to something in the atmosphere. Which actually does make sense. I mean, if you're yeah, living yeah, it in totally a, made yeah. sense at first, like but, very much uh, war of the worlds esque of like, right. Oh no, 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 no. They don't have all of our like, all of our, you know, natural immunities to bacteria and shit. So if they not went, to mention smog and stuff like that, they'd probably yeah, they'd have just a hard time. die immediately. Right. <laughs> but it, so it, you know, he made this. the telltale like hand fist over hand, like oh idea, totally lying. Now here's mm-hmm. here's a thing about it. Uh, the reason why I'm interrupting you again uh, here is because. Uh, I also wanted to point out that it was very interesting on how uh, Japanese governor guy, whatever, was like old man, totally not caring about the messes, up, the mess ups with ordering stuff. Like it was very evident. It was just like we're getting all that we need. We don't give a fuck that we're giving you the wrong stuff and whatever. This is not our actual focus here. And Except I couldn't porn. tell if it was that or if they were actually trying to fuck with him. Like if if it wasn't that they were. That that they weren't caring about the quality of the materials, but that they were physic that they were actively trying to sabotage it. 
sabotage or, you know, to force him to go back. Because if they didn't want him to go back home at all, they would have just said no. <laughs> but he did care about um, the porn this a little all bit. S- do what? The porn. That they messed up and gave him. Was like, oh, yeah, oh, that yeah. one was hilarious. Oh, oh, <laughs> I mean, I could hold on to that for you. <laughs> but the the question that I'm wondering is if this is all part of the plan, too, though. Like, if it if it's something else of bringing it... Because, I mean, they're they're obviously playing, like, shogi at this point. Right. And this kid this kid's playing checkers, and they're playing shogi. Right, yeah. Um, this is very much a another thing and this whole thing could have been a setup and it, you find out like when they find out that the maid is in the suitcase and has like gone in there like it basically like he's like oh i figured that would happen as if maybe that was part of the plan true like, like oh i knew that would happen cuz i put a tail on him regardless <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and it it's if they they did all of this to take the maid there, um, uh, a la part of like gate of where they they had them go in there. They had they wanted them to go into into Japan. But what was what would be maids. the benefit of bringing someone over there? Because obviously, if there's any worries, they obviously wanted to bring someone over to test it for whatever reason. Right. So, I mean, maybe it if would, it was just like, hey, the maid died. Well, we told you not to type thing. Yeah, it, it could have been. It could have been so that. Um, it could have been also like, so just because, okay, so if we have immunities to said virus, that doesn't mean that we have the virus in us. So when we go over there, that doesn't mean that, that we will give them the virus. However, the virus does exist in, in our world. So if they come over, get the virus, then go back and then spread, to, spread a disease. Like that's a whole other thing that could have happened as well too, you know? Ooh, or maybe maybe she's going to pick something up and she's now brought it back. She's not, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like she picks up whatever the the virus is and brings it back in. Like that could have been something else that they were hoping for. So biological warfare by proxy brings back yeah. just a common flu bug, but because it's so advanced more than anything they have, wipes out 80% of the population. Easy pickings. You know, they but it's a horse child point, slave labor. Just, you know. Something like that. Yeah, they could have just brought like a sample of influenza or a True. sample of measles over. I mean, like that's that's a whole separate thing. They could have just been like, oh, uh, yeah, like let's just scrape this sample onto some bread that's going into this town and then watch everybody die. Yeah. True. So th- it feels like there is a plot, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> there is a plot somewhere. <laughs> it's not in this fucking episode, <laughs> but it definitely exists. Well, I mean, there's plot in this episode. There's huge <laughs> plot. <laughs> there's plot in this episode, and there's plot in this episode. Yeah, there, there's some great <laughs> plot. <laughs> Just not that we're figuring out what the government's plot is yet. <laughs> True. All right, uh... Yeah, so it says people can't go over. Uh, he has that super lewd dream, uh, and he wakes up in his room. <laughs> in his room. So the best part is I didn't even think about this, is that so he goes on a job interview, gets the job, goes to, like, the acceptance for it, totally not expecting anything other than, like, hey, you've got a job. Why would the need have cleaned his room? Yep. His room's a fucking mess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's left that way too. <laughs> so he just wakes up and his room is just a goddamn pigsty. I mean, it's no it's not Futaba's room at all, but it's pretty bad. I like that the first thing he does is check to make sure he's actually being paid cuz it's just like duh. <laughs> you need yeah. to make sure am that I'm getting money. Am I pure yep. yeah, so active? Yeah, I am. And then my so, favorite thing of this episode was the Google. The what? The Google was Google. Oh, yeah, Google. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, okay, so, and this is where, so I, I went to, I made sure to make note of this. So, like, I rewound it and paused it on his bank account screen because we were talking, like, did we hear that right? Is he getting paid that much? He is getting paid 300,000 yen a month, every month on the 25th. Um, he only pays 1,500 yen for electricity. <laughs> I think that's what it was, or 15,000 yen, something like that. But so he gets paid the equivalent of 2,000, 
$682.76 by current uh, yen to dollar <laughs> transition. It's not bad gig, For a man. Yeah. For a month. What, it, what, then I sat there and I was like, on second thought, this actually isn't that bad because he's just making that money. Right. Everything else is paid for. Yep. Like all, all he's is paying paid. is electricity. What, Chris? All expenses paid. Yeah, he's all just... expenses paid. So he's getting paid three hundred thousand dollars a month. So he's in this made. case, it's yeah, it's 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 actually <laughs> like you, you could get paid worse. Could get paid worse. worse. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah. So he, he goes to the front door, opens up the second bag, and. They just sit there and stare at each other for a second. Dude, when he opened that bag and she was just <laughs> wide-eyed looking at him, like, it was just like, mm. hey. I was just so, I was like, okay, there's not, a, like, a much creepier way to open, like, just Why someone is there a second staring bag at here? you in a duffel bag. You start unzipping a duffel bag and it's just a, a head staring at you. It's not creepy at all. <laughs> yeah, no. I just, started busting up laughing. Oh yeah, I, was just, I thought that was great. Just that weird glare of like, <laughs> and she's like, "I gotta pee." <laughs> <laughs> so then you find out that their rings don't work in Japan. They only work in the other in the other world. And then he comes to the realization that he lied to him. And he just says to himself, that D-bag lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the best is when they figure out, like, as they figure out that she went over there, they're like, yeah, there, was, there were two bags, and this note was left on it for the guards. And he reads it. And he's like, this note is misspelled. <laughs> 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 Which, in my opinion, giving the neat a little bit too much credit for himself. <laughs> oh, man, it was great. <laughs> so uh, so they tell, they tell the castle that he's gone. Uh, and then they cut back to, uh, to her. And this is when she needs to use the bathroom. And she has her... She has... Just like all Americans, her first run-in with a Japanese toilet. <laughs> Bidet! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> butt spray. What's this button do? <laughs> oh, that feels real nice. <laughs> and then this is when you see the googuri part. <laughs> googuri! <laughs> googuri. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. So now this is when uh, they get the half episode portion and... Rather than giving characters with names, SDF member, <laughs> favorite game, Fleet Connections, favorite character, Destroyer Shimikaze, and then Eldant Knight, favorite game, uh, Bandom Age, which I'm assuming is Gundam, because um, I think that they've said that before, yeah. and then favorite character, Iwarkel. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, he takes her to Akiba. <laughs> Which is the birthplace of culture. Of course. <laughs> um, otaku culture. She's going, yeah. <laughs> birthplace of otaku culture, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, uh, she goes nuts over buses and trains, which is funny. And she's like, they're going on about how, like, she should have seen them in anime and blah, blah, blah. She's like, yeah, but that's different when it's there. <laughs> uh then she learns about maid cafes because she's like walking around. She's like, that girl's dressed like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this was horrible. Master. No, that's not that bad. No. The next section. The song. Bad. The song. Oh, the song. Yeah, oh. the song's bad. No, the next section's bad when he takes her to the giant anime and manga store um, and he's explaining like all the things and uh, what like the reason why people are standing in line for the signing thing. And he talks about how like, oh, he's like, yeah, that's the, every time that they come out with a new anime or manga, when it comes to the store, they have like a voice actor there that that will sign uh, memorabilia for you and meet you and shake hands. He's like, oh, and that's the one that I really tried to that I really tried to pre-register for, but I couldn't get a I couldn't get a pre-order in the one with the raw bloomer shot. <laughs> And then she says, she says, not knowing what she's saying, I'll give you a raw bloomer shot. <laughs> <laughs> so then they go to a soba shop for food and she's just like, 
Like they're show they show her looking at like the bowl of soba, and then she looks over at the little tiny plate that's got like the scallions and the round green paste mound that's there. And you think that she's looking at the scallions. Nope. She grabs the entire thing of wasabi, throws it in her mouth, and she <laughs> refers to it as devil food of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta oh, snort man. that stuff to be real, man. Come on. Oh my god. Uh, oh, and okay, yeah, and then so they go to the, they then go to the maid shop or to the maid cafe. That was the last stop that they do, and they do the, the like the art for it. Uh, and she's she's thinking the entire thing's weird of like the culture and whatnot, and uh, but also awesome at the same time. So the one girl does the maid art, and she draws a picture of. Uh, of uh, Madoka, yeah, Madoka, or Madoka, on on there, and then she asks for a face of her or a picture of her master on there, and the girl's like, "What?" It's <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so she draws a picture of him. Uh, they do this weird chant of like make like where they make like heart signs, and they like become delicious or something like that. Become delicious, become delicious, and then they they're supposed to eat. And she says, I can't bring myself to eat your face, master. <laughs> For 30 yeah. minutes. Takes 30 minutes to to uh, get her to eat her fucking omelet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and just reach over and smear the face. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, then there's an awkward moment in his room. This is why her. she's not best girl, by the way. 30 minutes trying to convince a bitch to eat? No. Yeah, she's nah. crazy. She's best girl. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is best girl? Shinji. <laughs> he, he, said, he said Shinji. Oh, man, it's... it's I don't know, because part of me wants to say Big Booze McGee, but she's way too into boy love. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if there is a best girl. It's, it might just be the fucking wolf. No. The wolf might be best girl. No. No. There might not be one, dude. I don't I'm think sorry. there is one, man. There, there might not be a best girl Sinji. in this entire thing. I'm okay if, with Sinji. If she, wasn't, if she wasn't 10, maybe the dwarf girl. <laughs> <laughs> dwarf but girl. She's also super racist. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to go with nobody is best girl in this, <laughs> except for maybe Shinji. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, okay, so they have the uh, they have the awkward moment in his room. Um, he's a doofus. Uh, he runs and buys panties at the 7-Eleven. And as he's coming back, runs into a condom machine and asking if it's a blessing from God. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he gets there, and she's passed out. Puts her in the bed, and then he starts turning into a fucking neat perv. and But then realizes, oh, I should stop being a fucking pervert, and I should put a blanket on her and let her go to sleep. Thank God. Thank God. Because <laughs> his hand got really close to going up that shirt. But the shirt that she was wearing <laughs> is really like, did she read that shirt before she put it oh, on? Yeah. <laughs> did it she showed her looking said? at it. <laughs> it was basically, what did it say? It do said, you want. do you you whatever you want or something. <laughs> Why does he even have that shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's a very good Cause question. Because he's best girl. Because <laughs> he's best girl. Yes, because he's best girl. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> so they, this whole time uh, they had convinced Patron to do her work so that uh, if she did, then they would summon Shinji for her. <laughs> and she's like blazing through her work because she wants to see that sweet, sweet, neat love. No, no, uh, no more alcohol until you finish your, your yeah. <laughs> job. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do it. That's fine. I'll get this all taken care of. So then she starts finishing and they're like, well, shit, what are we going to do? He's still in Japan. So then... The old man from her guard dr tries dressing as him. <laughs> doesn't even take and off his hood, though. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even take off his hood. That, that part's hilarious. Um, and then they, they finally say, like, she's like, oh, he's in Japan? Why didn't you say that in the first place? 
And they're like, oh, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. So then he wakes up, and he's, and, uh, he's not in Japan anymore. Uh, and realizes that he forgot all the shit that he was supposed to go there it for. It bugged yep. me that he didn't, he, he wasn't concerned at all about the maid. Like, he was just like, oh, I guess I'm back in this world again. Totally forget. Like, no one seemed to even care about it. No one even mentioned it. She snuck out. He knew she snuck out. Yet when he wakes up back in his bed in, in mystery land, he's just like, oh, guess everything's back to normal. Mm-hmm. Like, wouldn't you be like, oh, fuck, I had a fugitive? <laughs> 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 well, I mean, he did wake up in his bedroom and not a prison cell. That, But so no, that was, well, yeah, but there's still. There's one thing. <laughs> but, and but they could have just killed her. They could have been like, yeah. well, she's dead now. Well, yes, mm-hmm. this is true. <laughs> She saw too much. She is now dead. Exactly. Uh, And he was just like, whatever. I guess I'm just back. Whoops. Forgot to do the main reason I was here, even though I went to the exact store I needed to go to to buy whatever shit I needed. Good thing I have the wolf girl. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, this is true. He was, again, as I said, he was too busy thinking about, oh, God, where is it? That elf strange? (laughs) No, not the elf strange. (laughs) It's the shit. The raw bloomer shot. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy thinking about the raw bloomer shot and how he could get one from the elf strange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this brings us to episode eight. Melancholy of her imperial majesty. Fed up <sighs> with all the responsibilities piled upon her, Petralka shuts herself in her room and refuses to leave. Shinichi, who used to live as a shut-in in in Japan, decides then to show her the life he used to have, with all the ups and downs that come with it as as well. And I don't know what you're talking about. This was actually a pretty deep episode for the most part. It was good because we learned a little bit more about her past and whatnot, but... For the most part, the the no, I, the, like the whole premise behind it, I, I was not a fan. Again, uh, for me, I was coming in hoping to have more than just five minutes of each episode be character development. I was hoping like there'd be a lot more growing going on. It was like half the episode, though. No, half no. no the way more of it was just her being a pill as usual, talking about being neat, the fan service in the bathroom, and then finding out the deep history about how like. Oh, actually, our parents killed each other or killed themselves, you know, together. And that's why we're who we are. You're skating over the entire section where they're talking, where they go on and on about the the neat lifestyle and how really lonely it is. And the the like the bylaws that they put in place, like when you really nail down to it, it's like, yeah, that's, that's really depressing and really restricting on yourself that you put in. It's like, sure. You want to, you don't, you want to make sure that you don't do this, but this is also very, very bad for you. And it's very straining on your family. And like, like they spend a good amount of time talking about that too. They do. And, and they show, they do two things with that. Cause you're right on that. That number one, he talks her out of the neat lifestyle, showing how like important she is and how she's useful to the to the world and yada yada yada. But at the same time, you can tell he's kind of convincing himself that he doesn't need to be a neat. Which anymore. it was it was it was twofold. That's where I'm talking. I'm like, right. I'm like there was like a half an episode of character development with both her and with him. But where they're literally like all they're both coming to realizations of oh, we probably need to change. But. He didn't act ever like a neat. Like, it's just like, hey, we have here your I'm a neat type thing from the very beginning. But he never once acted like a neat this entire time. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh, I guess I shouldn't be a loser when he's never once this whole time acted more like a loser than just being an otaku. But he never once uh, looked at the way that he was as a bad thing. Right. And he's finally going, oh, this actually wasn't great. And we saw him really when he dragged himself out of that lifestyle. Yeah. And it wasn't like he willingly did. Like, he just kind of was like, oh, there's this online quiz for who's the best otaku. And I could get paid for doing, like, being an otaku. Hmm. I'll give this a try. Aces the quiz. 
goes to the job and inter- or goes to the thing and they're like, yeah, hey, you got the job. By the way, you're drugged and now you're in another world. Like he never had a chance to not or to like really be like, hmm, I should come to grips about not being a neat. He was like, boom, thrust into another world and oh, okay, here's all the elves and everything so you can neat out on things. But yeah, it's God. No, that that's true. I guess I just am not a big fan of Patron at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's the problem. Is I like I, I I like her specifically because of the drunk girl stuff. But yes. see, and that's only because we did that. That's not her as a character. This is true. I actually I and I don't know if I'm able to separate that or not because I did not like her at first, and then once we did the whole drunk girl thing, way better. Way watching better. these four episodes, like even recanting the first four episodes made it way better. Way and, better. And then like going over, like watching these four, it was great. I actually found myself going, man, I'm not getting enough drunk white girl in my mm-hmm. life. <laughs> 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 There's not enough drunk white girl in these four episodes. I've literally gone two episodes without crazy drunk white girl of these four episodes. <laughs> Yeah, but see right. again that that's us doing a service to this anime. <laughs> because we're awesome. We are obviously. awesome. <laughs> Cutscene powers activate. Form of snark. <laughs> With our powers combined. <laughs> Shape of sarcasm. Yeah, there you go. Jason got the Wonder Woman powers mm-hmm. thing. We're old. <laughs> You're old if you understand Wonder Twins. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so, all right, uh, Patron, so in this, Patron is bored, uh, Minori's, no, or Minori's still not happy with the lack of BL <laughs> in the school, <laughs> and they go to visit Patron, uh, they find out that she's escaped, left a note with uh, a Kanbe, which I think, I forget who a Kanbe was, um, but basically, like, she's taken off, and... <laughs> So they go searching for her, and I have written here, where do the drunk white girls hang out? Wine cellar. Wine cellar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. You might be right. We've made it better than it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he finds her, and she's inside a barrel, Um uh, she's Box. dreaming of her parents and you can hear her like calling out for her parents. And he, he comes to the realization that she's just a girl that's been thrust into this role. That it's not like, it's not like anything that she specifically chose or anything like that. It's that like shit happened. She is the empress and she has to do this whether she wants it or not. Right. Uh, bandage her duties, uh, locks out all of, locks all of the Elden out with magic uh, and has become a shut-in. If there's anything, if there's anything Shinichi is proficient in, it's being a pathetic shut-in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Big Boobs McGee says about him. Then uh, you find out that uh, Patron's parents were married by Gallius's parents when she was young, um, as a coup, um, which is fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's, and Gallius is feeling really bad about all this and has been, I guess for a while, but he's just been, he's been trying to be the hard ass, like leader of the guard the entire time. Um, and it's only because he's started developing this bond with Shinichi that really he kind of wants to go somewhere else. It feels like, (laughs) well, it also Um, explains this, that's like why he's so protective of Patron, yes, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, he's super protective of her, um, especially like at the beginning, like he was like super duper protective, and yeah, the fact that his parents murdered her parents, like yeah, I'd I'd feel really bad and probably want to protect her as well, um, so, so he goes, he gets to go in, uh, she lets him in, and. They're talking about what she's doing. She says, I looked it up in a book. Shut-ins live in filthy, filthy, nerdy rooms like this. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> except except she's in, like, a giant room. Yeah, opulent so, like, palace yeah, room. This yeah, this big opulent room with a giant fucking, like, 
emperor sized bed, which I think that's I think that's right. That's the next size up from king size bed is emperor bed, and it's just like this big giant long <laughs> bed. Um, How do you buy uh, sheets for that? You make them <laughs> out of people. You're an emperor. Yeah, right. <laughs> More um, that ten year old slave labor. <laughs> so. He runs power into her room. You just see like big giant power cables coming from coming from the generators that they have for the for the SDF running up into her room and he converts this tiny little corner of her room into a neat paradise. <laughs> Which I thought was fucking hilarious. Um and that's where she has to stay telling her that like what she was in was way too big for a neat. That's not what a neat is. It's like, boom, you need to be in this tiny ass little space with everything at arm's reach. Um, Got your porn, so then, your snacks, your video, video yep. games. What more do you yeah. need? Yep. But if you're going to see a board, they read manga till you're bored of that. Then you watch your porn till you're bored of that. Go back to your video you games. Go sleep. Yep. Doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> so they cut to the, the mid episode thing and you see Brooke Darwin, who Brooke, if you don't remember, is his lizard man like servant. Um, and his favorite game is Starfords, and his favorite character is Godez. Then you get Sheris Darwin, who is his <laughs> wife, whose favorite game is Monster Busters, and her favorite character is Great J- Jaggy. I don't know. I can't read my handwriting. All I have next is hypersexualized lizard <laughs> woman. <laughs> no, right? This is the first time we ever see her. We just oh, yeah. learn about we don't her. Like, her no, it's not. No, it's not. She's in the fucking credits or the intro in every episode, <laughs> and you just hadn't been paying attention. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I left it running as I was writing notes for one thing. Like I think it was like episode six, and I'm like, oh my god, that's right. I forgot that like the lizard man's got like a chick. I'm like, is that gonna happen in this episode? Sure enough, here you go. Here's the lizard man's chick, the hypersexualized <laughs> lizard woman. But it's just like the the still shot. She's still not in the yeah. episode. He just no. Uh, he makes, he a, makes reference a reference about right. It. He just makes that's a reference, it. and yeah. that's it. Yeah, and that's it. But yeah, it's like fuck me. <laughs> I ho- I hope they keep it that way. <laughs> just like you never see her. Just here's this over the top. Like <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> like let's never show that again. And it's very much like the lizard woman in uh, Overlord. Oh, it's worse than that, in my opinion. Uh, they got pretty fucking like graphic with the lizard man and lizard woman. Oh, yeah, they got graphic with Overlord was like, fuck. And they kept drawing in, like, the credits and artwork and everything like that for that lizard woman. Very seductive. (laughs) I I lost Overlord. Overlord lost me with that bullshit. I was just like, I don't give a fuck about these lizard people. If they didn't have the hyper-sexualized lizard woman, the lizard stuff would have been palatable. No. No, it wouldn't. Because Overlord won. No, no. Once it... it, it, I I started losing interest and I I pushed on and it became more palatable. But It It would have actually been palatable in the end if they didn't have the hyper-sexualized lizard woman. No, they could have fucking skipped them 100% and we would have been just fine. It no, they fuck shit up in the third no, season. No, it doesn't matter. No, they they could have they could have just been a and we have lizard men. Like yeah, here they are. Great. No need to spend five hundred episodes explaining on how they're just people too. I don't care. I'm here to watch Overlord, they're, not lizard they're people, people. But by the way, we don't give shit about people. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It was pointless. Maybe the mangaka of Overlord. Really just has a lizard person fetish. <laughs> much like <laughs> much like much like much like the author of Game of Thrones just likes writing about the shapes of penises. <laughs> Which really are just lizards. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Outbreak All company. Right. Lizard penis. <laughs> So there's a conversation between <laughs> between uh, Big Boobs McGee and Gallius, and Big Boobs McGee like blatantly calls out Gallius's affections towards Shinichi, like blatantly well, calls for sure. it out. Like there was the whole like you laughed in episode four about the he can't like the he can't like the wolf girl because they're in a relationship, and by the way, he's totally the bottom. 
to now it's like, oh yeah, just totally called out the gay guy, and then he blushed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and then I showed him BL, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about, and yeah. he enjoyed it. <laughs> he so, <liked> it. <laughs> yep. So, cut to Shinji and Patron playing Dragon Quest in the dark. <laughs> Gathering XP is great for shut-ins with endless time. (laughs) (laughs) So he's explaining everything uh, about what they need to do, and he starts using the back scratcher to grab shit. (laughs) So he uses the back scratcher to grab manga instead of actually, like, like, not even, like, moving, like, sitting up two inches. Like, that's how lazily the shut-in life is that he's trying to, like, accentuate that he used to live. Like, you've never had a day like that. Come on. I, I've had days mm-hmm. where I've never left the couch, just played games, watched movies and stuff like that, had all my stuff that I wanted right there, and I was just like, I'm not moving from this spot. I, I, I've never been, like, the back scratch. You've never <laughs> lived. Thing. You've never lived, sir. I, 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 think, I think I may have tried to use a pillow at one point. And then, like, oh, I have to get up. <laughs> I, I, I'll agree to the back scratcher, but I've definitely used other things to grab stuff to prevent myself from moving as much as possible. I don't want to hear about your tiny penis grabbing <laughs> things. That's so weird. Go, go, gadget Even penis. if it's got tiny little arms. Jeez. <laughs> go, go, gadget lizard penis. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. <laughs> and on that note, we're done. This episode is deleted, and we are gone. Sorry, everybody. Po- cutscene is now uh, canceled. Um, we are done, and I am out of here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jason. Welcome to the Lizard Penis Podcast. Today we're talking about... <laughs> the Gadget Lizard Penis the, Podcast. The Thank gadget. you very much. Inspector Gadget Penis. <laughs> It gives a whole new meaning to inspect her gadget. Oh, um, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Uses back scratcher to grab manga instead of moving. Uh, there's a bunch. I, something written about their articles being great. I don't remember what that is. <laughs> um, and then they're sitting there talking and they're having a conversation like, and uh, uh, Big Booze McGee like peers in. And she's like looking at them, looking at them, looking at them, and all of a sudden she's like, I don't think they're coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he found his uh, heaven. Let's see. Do he I? found his heaven. Yeah, he totally he, found he's his in heaven. The neat he's, like, he's like, oh, I'm girl. back in. This is great. And she thinks that it's great too. So then uh, he sneaks her out to the bathroom uh, or so that she can take a bath. And he's like, he's like, real shut ins don't bathe. The stink is part of it. <laughs> <laughs> They lure the guards away with lewd anime. Worst and guards the, ever. The, the best was the back and forth shots. Like how many times they, they went back and forth between the guard and the anime. Like, <laughs> like it was like at least six times back and forth before then the, the guards just like pounced on it. But yes, worst guards ever. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, uh, this is when you find out that Fibercon is totally broken the, about the fact that he's staying there. So much so that, like, she's not even cooking. She's just stirring a burning empty pot and nobody's eating in the house, which I sorry, thought that part was funny. Just a few more seconds. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for the delay. It'll just be a few more minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the delay. It's a broken record. I'm sorry. I thought at first it was going to be like a magical apparatus, just like she's actually gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was wondering too, and then they're like, oh my God, she's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Did she just Ferris Bueller her way out of here? <laughs> <laughs> no, she uh, she weekend at Bernie's. She, she's still she in She hooked up a dead body. <laughs> So this is when they have, like, the really deep talk about their personal problems um, and about how about how when you first become a shut-in. So when he first became a shut-in, it was it was basically like I asked that girl out and I stayed home and the like then I stayed home a couple of days. And then because I did that, it was really hard to talk to, like to confront and talk to my classmates, at which point then I just stayed in more and more. 
And the longer you stay in that room, the heavier the door is and the less you want to come out and the less you want to do things and the more you want to just seclude yourself in. And this is where I was like, it got pretty deep on both sides where he was getting his character development and he was coming to grips with what he was before he came over into this world and explaining to her why she doesn't want to. Yeah, and then his whole, like, you can t- totally see the realization of just, like, man, I was locked in here just because a girl said no no to dating me, and she's yeah. got, like, an entire empire, mm-hmm. like, resting on her shoulders. Yep. He's like, fuck me. This this girl's got way more problems than me, and she's she was doing it. Like, I'm a dick. I'm yep. a little bitch. I should fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bitch. <laughs> I'm so a little best girl. Yep. <laughs> so he goes on about that, and Patron has a moment of clarity about her behavior, where she's talking about how so many people are are waiting for her and depend on her and everything. They fall asleep. He wakes up. The end credits are playing on whatever game it was that they're playing. Um, it's not Dragon Quest because the Green says, all your base are belong to us. <laughs> Which is a great <laughs> toss back as well. Yes. Which was totally awesome. I loved that. Wing um, Commander. He wakes up and uh, looks over. He's like looking around and he doesn't see her. And he looks at the door and Patron's just standing there at the door. And she's got her hand like ready. And she's like, you're right. The door is heavy. Puts her hand on it, dispels the magic, and then walks out. And then is back to sounding like the drunk white girl, (laughs) which was great because it it put everybody else at ease that she went back to the way that she was, which was good. Um, And then they cut back to the to the palace and nobody has eaten in a day. And the and uh, fiber is still broken, (laughs) like just standing there at the pot, stirring a little (laughs) ladle. (laughs) And that's it. That's uh, episodes five through eight of, of Outbreak Company. Yep. yep. So going through, did you feel a little bit better about it at least, Jason? No, like I said, it. it I I like the show. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's obviously got its, its silliness to it. But what I was saying was just like I was more anticipating more of the uh, Charlotte style growth. Rather than the, the, yeah. the short spurts mm-hmm. that we got. And like I said, it's still good. I just was wanting more 50-50, not 80-20. It, it, it's, well, it's, it's a little bit more 50-50. It's a little bit more on the 50-50 side. It seems like it's every other episode. Lighthearted, a mm-hmm. little bit more, a little bit deeper. Lighthearted, a little bit deeper. Lighthearted, a little bit deeper. Um, it kind of it kind of goes along that line. Um, but... You know, we know that it's definitely going to be lighthearted for the next one because the next one's the swimsuit episode. <laughs> Beach episode, bitches. Yeah. If you haven't had enough fan service yet, guess what? You're going to get it. You're going to get it now. In so a space. Get your lizards ready because they're going to enjoy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is the worst joke. Why do I keep making it? I hate it so I much. I feel so horrible saying it, but it's funny. It's terrible. <laughs> The, okay, so the next four episode titles are, so, like, everything else, like, I I feel like, okay, so maybe, oh, yeah, they are all uh, play on other on other animes. That's right. Now they think about it, it's like, they, they really are all, like, the Made in Japan, the Melancholy of Her Imperial Majesty is the same as that other Melancholy, uh, epi- the anime that we've talked about watching, but it's a 26 episode one. The one that's like does time traveling and you have oh. to watch it in a specific order. Um, but Swimsuit of the Dead, <laughs> Magical Girl Petralka, Plot Silent, Plot Deep, and Shoot the Invaders. That's the next four episodes that we have. The final four episodes that we have. So, um, yeah. It- of the Dead, and obviously High School of the Dead is one mm-hmm. of those yeah. fan service shows. That's where I was like, I was like, oh, maybe, yeah, and then, and then Magical Girl Petralka, like, yeah, they're all plays on other animes. Well, that's cool. Like, now, I didn't notice now that, that I really think about that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice it either, and then I'm just like, oh, hmm, okay. There seems to be a trend uh, here. That, that, that's kind of cool. <laughs> all right, so, uh, but that's it. That's what we got for, for those episodes. Hey, Jason. What? 
You want to do that block roll? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's right. We ain't done it we yet. We haven't done it forever. So, yeah, but hey, you, if you made it this far, thank you so very much. You're now, like, best friend. Like, honestly, like, I can't believe that anyone would listen to this at all. I wouldn't. Ever. <laughs> 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 but uh, You mean those poor, those poor, poor souls that are really listening to Asabi Asabase on... Uh, on Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Like I'm scared. <laughs> I, f- I fear for those people. Then they're going to love this episode because it's just been <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, you, you guys are awesome. I greatly appreciate it. We all love to hear from you and know, stuff like that. Uh, um, tell any of your friends, if you have any friends that are like major otaku nerds as well, like anime, even if you don't think they like anime at all, but you're just like, man, if you think I'm a nerd, you should listen to these nerds. <laughs> Send them our way because we'd love to hear them like just laugh at us and stuff like that because we're just funny. Uh, um, tweet us anything, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you got it. I beat it first. Um, uh, tweet and us at, at, at I beat it first. Uh, um, Facebook is uh, I beat it first. Com. Uh, obviously, our website. And cutscene IBIF. Cutscene IBIF. Yeah, because we couldn't get cutscene because uh, we made cutscene a segment of our of our website years ago but then we never made anything go with it so cutscene has been taken by other things since whatever you can find us all at i beat it first if you don't know we're actually a, a video game review website as well i beat it com. this is our anime segment about it all you can check out our other podcast which is just regular i beat it first and it's more video game more of the same shenanigans from the three of us just being jerks and making fun of stuff all over the place um but with a lot more drinking a lot <laughs> more drinking it is definitely a drinking uh, uh podcast and i do uh um drink heavily <laughs> I need to Not talk as to these guys. As someone else on this podcast does. But, <laughs> you're definitely having the record a little bit more right now, for sure. Uh, at least I'm sober by the end of them. Sometimes. Sometimes. At, at, at least I'm, okay. At least I'm not blackout drunk. There anymore. we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> Chris, gotta have record in something, I'm right? Out in the middle of them. <laughs> you gotta be the best. Gotta be. Best drunk. You got the record of the biggest chest tattoo. Too. Yeah. There you go too. That's right. All right. <laughs> but anyway, tell your friends. Check us out. Uh, please rate, review us. Anything you can do at iTunes, Spotify. You can find us at anywhere that you listen to your podcast. We love having you guys listen to us. We love having hearing your opinion. Opinions, email us anything at I beat it first cutscene at I beat it first dot com. It doesn't matter. We want to hear uh, what you have to say. If you have a new anime that you think that we should watch too, if you love hearing us just ramble about this stuff, send us uh, your recommendations as well because we definitely need new material that we're going to be going through. Yeah, so we're uh, one episode away from finishing up this anime. So we definitely need, you know, if you guys have something that you want, we've got a short list of anime that we're going to be doing next. But, uh, you know, we're obviously taking any emails or any suggestions that anybody has if it's something that we haven't already watched. Um, We've talked a little bit about like possibly revisiting some ones that we've all watched. And we're like, nope, that's it. We're not going to revisit them. If we've already watched them, they're out. So uh, we've got a long list of anime that we can't watch anymore because we've all watched them. But uh, if you've got something that is crazy outlandish, uh, preferably not cringy and not too on the mature side. <laughs> <laughs> We'd rather not and by break mature down we mean like hentai. blatant That'd nudity. <laughs> blatant nudity and hentai. Yes, none of that stuff. We don't. We don't need that in our lives. Per se, any we don't more need, than it. We don't need to talk about that in public. <laughs> on the internet. We, yeah, we would prefer not to talk about it in podcast <laughs> form, <laughs> if at all. Uh, but as Jason said, uh, rate us, review us, subscribe to us, uh, follow us on Spotify. If you if you have anybody that wants to listen to either one, either our video game podcast, I beat it first, or cutscene, please let them know. Um, I would recommend that if you're gonna start them out on I beat it first that maybe just go ahead and skip ahead to, like, episode nine. <laughs> you can probably say. do that for both of these. <laughs> no, actually, episode five. We'll go episode five, 60 tentacles a second. We'll oh, do that one. One of our better. The yeah. audio quality got better. <laughs> and that is one of our highest listened to episodes, so. <laughs> but, yes, uh, definitely, uh, you know, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And we look forward to finishing up Outbreak Company with you in two weeks. 